Okay, we have December the 16th, 1960, at 10, 14 a.m., 10 seconds. And we're coming from Houston, Texas. This is the second one I have done like this today. Actually, it seems to be a combination of the last two. We have the sun in Ophiuchus again. And I just measured this a while ago, so I know it is. I'll pop the star right here. In the upper left-hand corner, Ophiuchus, right under the sun. So there's no way around that one. Um, they're uh, outright astronomically calling it Ophiuchus, but you're going to find your information in Scorpio. If you can find anything on Ophiuchus, it will be um, new. And it is considered the sign of ether. The others are earth, wind, I mean earth, air, fire, and water. And uh, this one was brought in in part of Scorpio and part of Sagittarius. And it is under the sign of ether. You have Jupiter and Saturn in uh, Sagittarius. Headed for a conjunction, actually, that happened shortly after your birth, within the next month or two after you were born, 1961. And actually, they retrograde back and forth in this particular year. I've watched it happen on several videos. Venus in Capricorn. Um, <clears throat> Venus rules Taurus, which is fixed Earth, and she's in the sign of cardinal Earth which could only enhance her abilities. She's actually in the heart of the goat. She stole the heart of the goat. Uh, so that's going to be helpful to you because these two will come together in this sign right here in 2020. And that'll put you right at 60 years old, right after your birthday. Yeah, you were born in 60, 40. Yeah, you'll be uh, 60 years old. And uh, you're going to get a bump from Venus through this mess. Uh, your son in Ophiuchus. Now, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about Ophiuchus. I would take uh, the last house of Scorpio and try that information on for size. But uh, whatever is going on with Ophiuchus, it's big magic. Because the Pope played that card and uh, you got two here. This one's going to be labeled that as well. I can almost see that happening. Let's see if I can zoom in on Mercury for you and peg another planet closer by it. That way, um, uh, another star. Come on, show me some more. Tell me this is the big black pit down here. <clears throat> Give me this one. Okay, that's just considered space, H-I-P. It's not related to any constellation. So is that one. Okay, this one is in Ophiuchus here. Any of you others, are they going to mark y'all Ophiuchus? No, not even listing nothing but the magnitude of that one. Okay. Uh, no. They're going to call Mercury in, let me see here, yeah, they're going to, you're going to call this one in Scorpio, let me take another look, I'll even pop it over, I went the wrong way, because it's calling Ophiuchus way over here. I don't see how you couldn't at that point. <clears throat> so yeah, that one's going to be iffy, but like I said, you're not going to find a lot of information on the Ophiuchus, so you're going to have to fall back on Mercury and Scorpio. And Mercury uh, rules mutable Earth, okay, which is some of the magic they played in September, uh, which is mutable Earth, and they played the uh, Ophiuchus card right here with the moon. So there's big moon magic in this particular area. It was right in the crotch of Ophiuchus. So uh, your moon, 
Wow. I've done a lot of these here lately too. Come on down. It's not cooperating with me. I want a closer look at the moon. Because within minutes, it's almost, uh, I mean, just, just coming off of that day moon. Actually, it's coming into it, isn't it? Sun's over here. But that is so close to a complete day moon. And we've been seeing a lot of that lately as well. Because it is in the sky with the sun. And you were born at 10 a.m. Uh, so the moon is definitely up over the ecliptic at that point with the sun sitting in that constellation there. Mars and the twins. <clears throat> this seems to be uh, the new galactic center right here, really, where uh, Mars is as the Milky Way on the other side. You can kind of see it in the background a little bit. But Cancer used to be the marking point for the winter solstice. And as you can clearly see, it is no more. The Milky Way galaxy is, which makes Gemini the marking point for the summer solstice, not Cancer. They've got everything wrong. So your Mars or your action is sitting completely at the other end of the ecliptic. And this would be, have been in the sky at night, which is going to deteriorate some of its uh, power for you because you're a day baby. So your action is really split at the height of summer. Uh, it, when you catch Mars in Gemini, that's when you'll be empowered. You need to watch out for that one. Uh, let's poke on around before we do... Uh, the outer planets, we're going to have to pop in by ourselves. Okay, let's do that here. We got Venus, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn. We need, did we get Neptune? Where's Neptune? Okay, Neptune, another call that I'm going to say is Virgo because I done popped that star there earlier this week. Yeah. So your Neptune is in Virgo. Now, Neptune is a water planet. He's like Triton or Neptune, the god of the sea. And to add Neptune to mutable Earth um, makes the clay more pliable, more changeable for you. I don't think your Pluto is going to be there. Your Pluto is probably going to be in Leo. But let's find Uranus first. Uranus over here in the mouth of the lion, close to more in the throat than a mouth, but yeah. So uh, we all know the attributes of Leo, but Uranus rules things that are relatively new to the world because it's a relatively new uh, discovery of this planet back into the zodiac after thousands and thousands of years, and we've only had it here for what, maybe a couple hundred years, if that. So Uranus uh, deals with technology and had a lot to do with uh, the Industrial Revolution. Bill Donahue's got some great information on Uranus and some of the other constellations, if y'all are interested in watching his stuff. And he comes at it from a very esoteric point of view. He understands it's all about consciousness. Uh, I don't know if he understands the Pluto thing yet, but um, I love his work. And he could give you a little bit more lowdown about the effects of Uranus, because it's right now it's on the other side. But to have it in your birth chart in Leo. Now let's do, um, and you're probably fixing to see Pluto there with it as well. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, right in the back, right next to what star is this? Do we have a name for this star? No, just Leo, just a star 60 in the constellation of Leo. What about this one? 
let's pop this over in the Arabic and get some translations for this. You don't have a whole lot of the earth thing going on for 2020, like the chart I did a while ago. You have this Ophiuchus sign, which is a whole different ball game that I can tell you it's there, but I can't tell you a whole lot about it. One of Al Zubarba, Zubarbra. And I would actually have to look that up. I don't know, but I'm going to assume it has something to do with the lion. V is Al. One of the zodiac signs, Zubarbra, maybe. One of the houses of the zodiac. Uh, the tail of the lion. And just Leo there, that's unusual. You think they would have named that one. <clears throat> I wanted to use this to come back around and take a look at this Ophiuchus. Yeah, see, I thought we'd get a little different view there. In this particular one, I can call Mercury in Ophiuchus because it's in his foot. And then you have the sun in the left foot, right foot, the sun in the right foot, while his foot is in the Milky Way galaxy. So you're so close to what is actually the winter solstice anyway. And the winter solstice, the sun usually sits right about here, right in front of that bow and arrow right now. <clears throat> but the sun does this snake thing up and down too. And so the, it seems like this whole side of the zodiac has been pushed up from what I'm, what in the past are come down actually, because we're looking at 1960 here. But when you come down today, the sun's down here. And maybe that's why I'm having trouble with the Ophiuchus thing is because I can look back in the charts and see clearly how it passes through it and even the moon. But, uh, <clears throat> We've definitely had a tilt, a slight tilt in our axis for that to occur. And here you have Jupiter in the third eye of Sagittarius uh, with uh, Saturn at his back. So uh, Earth planet here, Sun planet here, uh, humanitarian sign, fire sign. They're calling this one ether, but if you pull the information from Scorpio, it's a water sign. So you have Mercury in water and the sun in the water are both in ether. That one I don't even know how to play. You'll have to do it, really find the information yourself. I've not got around to doing all that yet. I want to do a study on Ophiuchus, but I also want to finish all these videos. I'm forever learning. Uh, Venus over here now in the throat of the goat. So it, it speaks, that really tones down um, that dominant Capricorn voice um, that uh, more sweeter earth because she is fixed earth and this is cardinal earth. So she's going to balance out that Capricorn pressure in the zodiac for you if you play your cards right to where mercury is your communication your moon is a day moon you're a day baby all the way around everything's in the sky venus saturn and jupiter rose up over the ecliptic before the sun came up and uh, this should be jupiter saturn the sun uh, so they're kind of in rearranged order this is your forefinger, your middle finger is Saturn, and your ring finger is the sun, and Mercury is the pinky. So if this was your hand, it would be all twisted up. So you got to cross your fingers. These two are crossed. You got to cross your fingers and the sun and the mer Mercury together. You're, it's like live long and prosper. There's a big V right in here these two together and these two together that's going to happen again in 2020 this is going to repeat in your chart right before 2020 that whole year this is going to repeat for you it's what i'm seeing 